Right, so Jules bought this for me from our eminent South African cartoonist, Mr. Zapiro himself, and he signed it for us. And wasn't this just prophetic? And we use it as the featured image on our Dacher Private Clubs page. Because Dacher Private Clubs, I'm sure, is the reason why loads of people tuned in today. I'm sure it is the reason why some of you are here today. And this is something that we discovered or first experienced, Jules and I, together with our then director of Fields of Green for All, the late Simon Loxton, uh, in Barcelona in 2015. And you know, we went to the Betty Boop Club in Barcelona down the street from our hotel and we were just blown away. We were just blown away. There was a big soccer match on and everybody was smoking weed and watching the soccer. And it was just like, oh, we just felt like we'd come home. And since then, we'd always knew that this would be the best community solution to the trade in adult use cannabis in South Africa. So we pushed and we pushed and we pushed. And in 2019, together with Kenzie Ribuleza Muli, our Barcelona connection, we published this little booklet in 2019. And it still is the cornerstone of our Dacher Private Clubs project. Now I call it a Dacher Private Clubs project because it is not an association. Dacher Private Clubs are not legal yet. We're hoping to get legal certainty with the Hayes Club case. But until then, we cannot form an association of clubs. Certainly there are groupings. We have 420 Central, we have uh, Grow in Africa, we have the Canna Club in Plet. We've got various groupings of people who are working together for benefit of their communities, growers that are working together and who are always at the greatest risk. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, those who are growing our favorite plant always are at the greatest risk. But this whole closed loop system of a Dacher private club goes perfectly with the Cannabis for Private Purposes Act. It's just obvious. So we pushed and pushed and pushed from, from 2019. And we certainly, as I said in the beginning, we certainly have maybe between six and 800 clubs in South Africa who are operating with integrity and in a private manner. So what we decided to do earlier this year is issue a certificate of best practice. And it's so funny, somebody got hold of us on Facebook and said, where can we find a Fields of Green license for our club? <laughs> it's not a license, ladies and gentlemen, it's a certificate of best practice. Because when you join our Dacher Private Clubs project, which only costs 420 Rand a month, which is only about one bag of weed, um, you will receive this certificate of best practice with your logo signed and your logo will go there with its individual number so that people can't fake it. And we've sent out already, what is it Joe, maybe 30 or 40 close of these certificates. 40, yeah. I think we have um, close on 60 clubs within our project expanding every day people who wanted to join the session today suddenly signed up <laughs> so that was certainly uh thanks to myron because mm. this event here myron from the green side ladies and gentlemen was <laughs> it was first conceived by myron as something that we were going to call just don't pay just don't bribe the cops something for the club, something that we needed to have an industry briefing. And then I kind of railroaded Myron's idea and, and, I, and I made it into an industry-wide civil society briefing for everybody. So that is just how this whole event came about. I mean, I would rather sit and do a little webinar in our studio, but we decided we wanted to see all your lovely faces. So you, if you're watching this or you're here today and you have one of these certificates, you should be proud of yourself because you are funding the change that we need to happen. So now, together with your certificate, you will get a DACA Private Club's Code of Conduct, which is what we would like all of the clubs to adhere to. 
and it's nothing too onerous. We would like you to operate with integrity. Only break one law at a time. Don't drive with 500 grams of weed in your boot and have an expired license. Don't have a duck a private club without access control. The cops are going to walk in there and steal your weed or demand your money. So we demand that DACA private clubs operate with integrity. And we know that of all of the individual clubs, of all of the clubs, collectives, that they are all over South Africa, we know that those people that, that uh, sign up to our project, we know that they are operating with integrity. Because we send out our spies. <laughs> and then they say, oh, I just walked into this place in Seapoint and they didn't have any access control. And then one of us is on the phone. Where's your access control? Then you're going to come crying when the cops just walk in. So we demand that our clubs operate with integrity. The administration of your club is super, super important. Form a company. It doesn't have to be a non-profit company. If you would like a non-profit company, sure. I know it says in our booklet that in order for it to be not be seen as trade, it should be a non-profit model. But you know what, in South Africa people need to make money. And it's very difficult to, to run a non-profit company because you need three directors. And that dynamic of three directors is very, very difficult to manage. Whereas if you've got a husband and wife team or a group of friends or whatever, you can set up a PTY. But come speak to us, there's all sorts of things with the administration, but keep your books, pay your tax, if you've gone over the threshold, pay your VAT. Pay your GROW as well. Do a track and trace. There's lots of track and trace systems that are available. Do a track and trace that, you could, that if the police walk in and you get the chance, you can, play, you can prove to them that you are only sending so much weed through your club that your members need. So there's all sorts of administration things. But having said that, a DACA private club should be able to be run in an informal settlement with a ex in an exercise book or on a tablet or on a smartphone. So this DACA Private Clubs project, which hopefully will become the DACA Private Clubs Association for those people who are really trying their best to do a good job, will, is all inclusive. We have this situation in Africa where for hundreds of years we've had stock fells, for hundreds of years we've had burial societies and golf clubs and various private members situations for people who share the same interests. So when it comes to the administration, make sure that you are impeccable. There's no excuse in 2024 not to administer your club impeccably. Go to the trouble, even if it's on an exercise book. Know where everything is, and we'll speak a bit later about staff training and whatnot. Take care of your members. Know who they are. Go for a referral system if you at all you can. We only at the Jazz Farm Social Club, we only accept new members by refer referral. Because that way, if somebody else is not behaving themselves, you'll say, oh, we can look up on our system and see who referred you. And we'll come and take your friend away. We don't want him in our environment, you know. So member care is super, super important. Stay in touch with the members, send out newsletters, have little events at your club if you've got a menu and you're not just online. Support and collaboration. I think that one of the, this is one of the reasons why we are seeing all of these various private club collectives, you know. I think uh, Grow in Africa, our platinum affiliate, was one of the first. And, uh, and now there's quite a few collectives all around South Africa. And would it be amazing to see um, Brett Pollock and Marlene Tiernison's project at Harambi Solutions with joining the, the Ponderland farmers, who are just one group of rural farmers, don't remember, there's lots more, joining the Ponderland farmers with the clubs. Wouldn't that be amazing? Mm. They're doing incredible work. It's taken a lot of work on their part. They're based down there in Plett and also in Ponderland. So they're, they're on the ground with the farmers. And uh, Brett is a lawyer and um, Marlene is a teacher. So they both have the capacity to be able to put this 
project forward. And that's what support and collaboration is all about. And that's what we're encouraging amongst our, our clubs. And that's why if you join up to our project, we're going to come and visit. We're going to see whether you are adhering to this very, very basic code of conduct. Because then we can prepare ourselves and please, please, please let it happen, DACA private clubs become legal. Maybe we win at the Hayes Club. Maybe something happens in Parliament and they decide to let us do this. Because actually, according to the constitutional judgment of 2018, DACA private clubs should be legal. Mm. We've had dozens of legal minds read through that judgment and say they can't understand why DACA private clubs are not legal. So that is why we're really, really pushing this. It only costs 420 rand a month. <laughs> Thank you to those people who've joined up recently. Yeah. <laughs>